Willie Wilcox didn't come from a decorated college program like many PGA stars do, and he certainly wasn't the type of player who was expected to become a PGA star, but the one thing he did have over everyone else was a work ethic that was unmatched. Putting the work in day in and day out, he started to make his way in professional golf and ascended to the PGA Tour, achieving every golfer's dream. However, Willie's PGA experience is quite different than he led many to believe. In fact, Willie was hiding something huge, something so serious that if he were to ever get caught, his life and career would be over. Willie Wilcox was a heroin addict with a PGA Tour card, and this is his story. In the small town of Pell City, Alabama, just 35 miles of East Birmingham, Willie Wilcox's upbringing was shaped by a blue collar community. Willie's mother, Kim, possessed extraordinary talent and skill, becoming one of the standout players on the high school boys team. However, her dreams of pursuing a career on the LPGA Tour were set aside when she got married and took on other responsibilities. Fortunately, Kim's close friend, Chris Spivey, an Alabama women's amateur champion, played a pivotal role in securing Kim the prestigious position of head professional at Pine Harbor Country Club. It was here that Willie, under his mother's guidance, first discovered the game of golf. In the deep south, where few women held influential roles in the golf industry, Kim's achievements stood as a remarkable exception. Mom was a badass thriving in what was a man's world, Willie says. She was a field player and that's the way she taught me to play. At the age of five years old, Willie received his first set of golf clubs. His mother began taking him to work with her. We would get to the course at six in the morning. We were always on the putting green or I would just let him hit balls at me on the driving range. It really helped him get his distances down. Willie played his first tournament at the age of nine and from that moment, he was instantly hooked. He crafted his own swing from a very young age, Kim says. He always had great hand-eye coordination and was copying other people's swings. Willie devoted countless hours to honing his skills on the course, often in the company of older peers. By the age of 13, he found himself in the company of 16 and 17 year olds, some of whom possess remarkable talent in the game. However, alongside their golfing prowess, they engaged in risky behaviors such as gambling, drinking, and smoking cannabis during their rounds. Willie admired their golfing abilities, but he also noticed something more troubling, their use of pills. Curiosity led him to inquire about these substances, which the older boys referred to them as birdie pills. Unbeknownst to him, they were strong pain medications and their influences extended beyond the golf course. Little did Willie realize that this was just his first steps in a very long journey of becoming a drug addict masked as a professional golfer. The only question is, how long can he make that last? First, we are buying and selling these highly powered narcotics in the bathroom at school for a huge markup and also doing quite a heavy dose of them per day, Willie says. At the time, I'm becoming the second highest ranked golf recruit for my graduating class of 2004. How I juggled all this shit, I'll never know. Of my friend group in high school, there were eight of us, he says. Three are dead, three went to prison for five to ten years, one is a highly skilled engineer, and I made it to the PGA Tour. It was a mixed bag and everyone did drugs as often as we could afford them. Willie's college years at Alabama Birmingham were where things really turned up a notch for both his golf game and his drug addiction. His journey was filled with consistently low scores, involvement in various petty crimes, multiple arrests, and ultimately being dismissed from the golf team. Seeking a fresh start after leaving school, Willie contemplated joining the Navy. However, an unexpected opportunity presented itself when he was given a final chance to play collegiate golf at Clayton State, a Division II school located in Morrow, Georgia. Returning to his hometown circle, Willie reunited with his friends. Reflecting on those times, he recalls a fateful decision they made to purchase a bag of cocaine. Almost immediately after consumption, he sensed something was terribly wrong. His heart raced uncontrollably and a wave of sickness rushed over him. It felt as though his heart was on the verge of bursting. It turned out Willie had unknowingly overdosed and was swiftly rushed to the emergency room. His heart rate skyrocketed to a terrifying 222 beats per minute. 
Recalling the ordeal, he shares the deep stabbing pain in his heart that persisted for days, he explained. Shockingly, it was discovered that the bag of cocaine had been laced with Comet, a household cleaning product. All of these years doing drugs, and it took facing death in the face for Willie to learn that he should stay clear of certain drugs, but unfortunately, not all drugs. That incident taught me that I was not an upper guy, Willie says. Uppers are what we users call stimulants. Anything that gives you energy and alertness is an upper. My highs needed to come from downers or pills that had a sedative effect. Following Willie's victory in the Alabama Amateur prior to the start of his senior year of college, Willie transformed into what he described as a range rat. His life revolved around the practice tee to the extent that he practically lived there. During an intense period, he vividly remembers spending six hours a day hitting balls for a staggering 90 consecutive days. The driving range became more than just a place to refine his golf skills. It became his sanctuary and his most positive addiction. As Willie embarked on the mini tours, which offered substantial prize money, his journeys frequently took him through the southeast. This proximity to his drug connections and his hometown crew proved to be challenging for Willie. Despite shooting impressive scores and consistently cashing checks ranging from $3,000 to $9,000 in nearly every tournament, he frequently indulged in drugs during rounds, discreetly popping pills between shots. This destructive behavior not only strained his important relationships with family and friends, but also had a profound impact on those in Willie's life, even if they remained unaware of the underlining reasons behind his actions. In a turn of events that to anyone may seem impossible, Willie's golf game actually continued to flourish, resulting in increasingly substantial financial gains. In 2011, he achieved a significant milestone by earning a spot on the Corn Ferry Tour and then managed to qualify for the prestigious U.S. Open at Congressional. As the grip of heroin tightened its hold on him, Willie desperately sought an escape. He made the bold decision to leave behind his life in Alabama, bidding farewell to the deep south and the life he once knew. Determined to break free from the clutches of addiction, he embarked on a journey to get clean. Spending his days immersed in the healing embrace of salt water, he devoted himself to rigorous training and intense physical workouts. In an attempt to numb the cravings for harder substances, Willie turned to increase consumption of cannabis. After his much-needed break, Willie made his return to competitive golf in 2013. He emerged revitalized. That was the best golf year of my life. I was smoking a lot of grass but working out constantly. I averaged 317 yards off the tee and my body felt amazing. Weed helped me recover and helped me balance my hyperactive personality. Later in that same season, during the final round of the Utah Championship, Willie accomplished a rare feat by shooting a phenomenal 59. However, his increased marijuana consumption necessitated constant water intake to counteract potential drug tests during competition. The belief was that drinking ample water would dilute the chemicals in his system, increasing the likelihood of passing any drug tests. Unfortunately, towards the end of the season, a sense of complacency set in, leading into his second failed drug test of the year. Consequently, he faced a suspension, resulting in a forced absence from competition for five months. The shock of this suspension sent Willie into a downward spiral. Although he had kept the news of his suspension mostly to himself, he couldn't escape the sense that everyone knew. The discomfort stemmed from concerns about how sponsors and fellow players would perceive him, but more significantly, he grappled with the burning shame. Shame for being suspended, shame for being an addict, shame for having to repeatedly lie. The weight of his struggle bore heavily upon him as he felt incredibly isolated in his battle. After sitting out all this time, in order for Willie to retain his PGA Tour card, he would need to string together some extraordinary rounds of play. And once again, making it look easy even though he was immensely struggling, Willie delivered. In January of 2014, at the Sony Open in Hawaii, Willie exhibited remarkable skill, shooting a 69, 66, and 64 to secure a place in the last group on Sunday. He ultimately tied for 8th place with a final round score of 71, earning a substantial prize of $119,000. However, behind the scenes, his addiction continued to rage. Willie's ongoing battle with drugs, particularly heroin, resulted in mental and physical breakdowns prior to tournaments. He confesses, during that time I snorted a shag bag full of heroin. Some weeks he struggled with debilitating heroin withdrawals. 
Knowing the severe consequences of another positive drug test, he attempted to wean himself off the drug during tournament weeks. According to Willie, the first day without heroin wasn't unbearable, but the second day was a living hell. Dark depression and excruciating pain would consume him. His body would plunge into severe withdrawal, desperately screaming for relief for anything to end the torment. On days when his colleagues were meticulously charting the tournament course and preparing for competition, Willie found himself confined in his bed, enduring a river of sweaty torment. Between 2014 and 2015, Willie achieved remarkable success, accumulating an impressive tally of five top 10 finishes. Notably, he secured a solo second place at the prestigious 2015 Barbasol Championship. This string of accomplishments resulted in a significant milestone for Willie as he qualified for the highly lucrative FedEx Cup playoffs, a feat he had never accomplished before. His performance during the 2014-2015 season showcased impressive statistics, ranking 8th in scoring average, 4th in greens in regulation, 8th in strokes gained off the tee, and an exceptional 2nd in sand saves. Willie was undeniably playing the best golf of his career as he arrived in New Jersey for the first playoff event, the Barclays. With a promising start, Willie found himself just two strokes behind the leader after a strong opening round of 67 at the challenging Plainfield Country Club. However, he encountered difficulties in sustaining his momentum during the second round, ultimately falling short and missing the cut. Despite this setback, there was a silver lining. Willie had already accumulated enough points to advance to the next crucial playoff event, the Deutsche Bank Championship. Given the significance of the upcoming week and the close proximity of the tournament at TPC Boston, it was customary for most professional golfers to find local accommodations for rest and focused preparation. However, Willie made the decision to return home, once again placing himself in close proximity to the temptations that could potentially derail his career. All I had to do was not go to my buddy's apartment, get on a plane, and go to Boston, Willie said. But of course, Willie was a struggling addict, and instead of doing the right thing, he let his addiction make the choice and went to his friend's apartment, which was the start of a bender. Willie then woke up on that Tuesday having to make a decision. At that point, you're 48 hours from a potential drug test and I've got all this money on the table. None of that would have been available if I failed. See, Willie had more than just himself to think about here. He had his management team and family who relied on his paycheck. Failing a drug test wouldn't just affect him, but it would seriously affect the team around Willie. So instead of playing, Willie exaggerated the significance of a minor injury he had been dealing with, withdrew, and his season was over. For his 97th place finish in the FedEx Cup standings, Willie was awarded a substantial $75,000 bonus. However, one can only wonder what might have transpired if he competed at TPC Boston. Perhaps he would have performed exceptionally well, enabling him to climb up the ranks and secure a spot among the top 70, granting him entry into the prestigious BMW Championship. And if he had continued to excel, maybe he would have made it to the ultimate pinnacle, the Tour Championship, where he would have not only earned a guaranteed payout of $175,000, but also obtained highly sought after exemptions for prominent tournaments in the following season. No one in the history of the PGA Tour has done anything that stupid, Willie says. If I had played that second playoff event with how well I was playing, there's no telling where I could have ended up in 2016. Willie captivated the galleries with a remarkable display of late birdies at the unlikeliest of places, the 2016 Waste Management Phoenix Open. This tournament is renowned for its lively and festive atmosphere. Against this backdrop, Willie showcased his exceptional skills and resilience, ultimately securing a commendable tie for sixth place. However, the defining moment of his career unfolded a couple of months later at the prestigious Players' Championship held at TPC Sawgrass. During the second round of his esteemed event, Willie unleashed a shot that will forever be etched in golf history. A sensational hole-in-one at the 17th hole. The island green nature of the hole made this achievement even more extraordinary as it marked the first hole-in-one at that iconic location in 14 years. The electrifying celebration that ensued reverberated through the course, especially since Willie's own family members were among the spectators, bearing witness to this triumphant feat. Willie tossed his pitching wedge into the air and leaped into his caddy's arms and then around the tee box, delivering adrenaline-fueled high five. This was the highest point in Willie Wilcox's professional career. Everything after that moment went downhill quickly. His health and play deteriorated and worsened in the following seasons. 
At the end of the 2021 season, after losing his remaining playing privileges on the Corn Ferry Tour, Willie retired at the age of 36. After a harrowing brush with death, Willie confronted the stark reality that his very survival hinged on embracing sobriety and maintaining a clean lifestyle. In February of 2022, his devoted family and friends rallied around him, guiding him towards a treatment center where he could receive the support he desperately needed. Emerging from the facility after approximately one week, Willie appeared transformed, almost resembling a younger version of himself. With newfound strength and determination, he took to social media, openly sharing his journey and describing a profound sense of rebirth. He took solace in the fact that he had successfully taken the crucial step towards recovery. This moment marked a monumental stride for a man who spent two decades grappling with his inner demons and weaving a web of deception around his addiction, not only deceiving others, but also himself. I made millions of dollars playing on professional golf's biggest stage and blew a significant percentage of those winnings on drugs, Willie said. All of these things happened without almost anyone knowing. Thanks for watching our video. If you haven't yet, drop us a like, leave us a comment, and if you're looking for more golf content, don't forget to subscribe.